every single time you're spawning up and you're looking at the timer, 60 seconds, 45 seconds, 30 seconds, it's always telling you where you can go, what you can do. Hard point, just like S and D, there's a 50 yard line and then there's the three lanes. We have our bottom lane, we have our middle lane, and then we have our top lane. Um, with this information, we also understand that just like S and D, as long as we have players filling in these lanes and we're not letting these enemies get past our 50 yard line, they are not gonna be able to flip spawns, which is key. We don't wanna flip spawns, because right now, as you can see, for P1, red team, we can get P1, and if we keep dying and we keep spawning up, we'll get P2, and if we keep dying and we keep spawning up, we'll get P3. So spawns are very important. It puts us on defense, and another reason why we want to fill in those three lanes. Whenever you're filling in three lanes, it's not like S and D where you want to like hold a pre-aim. It's very much of you want to push up it and you want to try and get map control and positioning, right? So right now, since we're talking about P2, uh, with this given scenario, let's say red team, they, ro they got four dead and then they rotated for P2. Uh, so we kill all of the blue team and all of blue team would be spawning right here for p2 uh, this guy is bottom middle so this player is rotated for p2 this player is top middle we have a player soaking up time and then we have a fourth player basically anchoring and holding the entire full pinch and once again just to prove it this player's in time holding the right lane he could also hold middle this guy can hold middle or he, he can hold the right lane this guy's just gonna soak up time, but he could look out the window and hold the full pinch. And then obviously we have this guy picking up the left lane and also picking up middle if we need it. With this, all we gotta do is wait for these enemies to push us and no matter what, we should win the gunfights. And based on their spawn right here, they're limited to where they can go. Just like the S&D we talked about, they're limited to only a few spots. They can push bottom of uh, P5, right? Or bottom office is what some people call it, or bottom forklift. They could hop up top and they could go top snow, or some people call it top AC. They could push out of bottom middle. And that's really all their influence to do. Now, they of course could go all the way over here and go top server or they could go all the way around and try and flip spawns. But when we are paying attention to this kill feed right here, and we know that we killed four enemies, we would understand that this is the fastest spot they can hit. This is the second fastest spot they can hit, bottom middle. And then the slowest route they can hit is on the complete opposite lane over here on the left lane. So, Let's go ahead and let's say that it's 60 seconds of P2 and these enemies are just trying to hit out and play for the uh, for, play for P2, right? So this guy runs out middle, this guy runs out front, this guy goes top snow, this guy runs out front, and once again, kills go down. So let's say we kill three enemies. So let's say we kill this enemy middle, he spawns up, we kill these two enemies in the left lane, they spawn up, and then this guy's still alive, top AC unit. When these guys spawn up, we now know that it's probably 45 seconds left of P2, right? So we killed them once, they hit these front lanes, they died again, now they're spawning there a second time, and now with 45 seconds left, this is where we might see one of these players hit this outer lane over here. And once again, the way we would see that is we might only see two players hit front. And when we see these two players hit front, we might kill these you know, two players again. They're spawning up again. But now we're like, wait a minute, we're missing number four. We're looking at our kill feed and we keep killing the same three people over and over and over again, but we're missing a fourth player. And that fourth player means he would be hitting this outer lane and it's because he's trying to rotate. He's trying to flip spawns. So then this is where like number two would 
obviously be prepared for that and play for that kill. These guys around 30 seconds, like let's say we kill them all over again, it would be like 30 seconds left of P2, and now this is where they might send, all right, screw it guys, let's send two players over here on the pinch, and then we'll have two players over here to try and fight uh, old P2. So keeping this exact same scenario, and now we're on offense. So on offense, you have two breaks you can do, and then usually the third break, you're trying to go for a rotation. So I would say when you guys are playing ranked play, when you guys are playing eights, and we have to break, and we're at the 60 second mark, take your time on hitting these routes. At the 60 second mark, this is giving you guys time to you know hit a route, go for a play. And I would say, because we're trying to you know take our time to hit for routes, we can go for super like outer lane routes where we may have one player you know just playing bottom looking for damage of course we would have a player go top ac just cuz that's a very good power position but i would say we can then have players go like top server to look for kills and then our fourth player could like push bottom server and try to go bottom middle and like play to like spawn trap or something like that right and the whole point of it is whenever you guys are breaking and you are doing your first break, you're going to want to try to take your time with it. Um, and the whole point of it, it's ideally when these two guys right here are shooting at this guy and this guy, they're so focused that by the time that these players get, you know, top server and over here, this player over here can kill like number one. And then number three would probably like react and like, you know, get behind cover and then number one can push through, and then uh, number one would spawn up right here, and then number one could like basically start spawn trapping number one over and over again, and now this could like force a 3v2. And that's all because we spread. We spread the map, and we're taking different angles, and we're making these enemies you know, force a 2v1 where they're focused on playing for good spawns, while us three are playing a 3v2 and trying to break P2. And ideally what would happen is if these trades go down, so what would happen is it would be like um, this guy flies in first, he dies, and then number four kills number three, and then number four dies to number four, and then number two flies in and kills number four. Basically in this scenario like this, what would then happen is ideally our teammates would start spawning like right in front of P5 over here. Um, and number two would be pushing the back, number one would be playing his life, and then these players would be spawning all the way out over here. And then ideally, this guy can push up, kill these guys, and then once we kill these guys, our teammates would ideally, um, if they didn't already spawn up here, then they would obviously start spawning back here once we start getting those kills, right? And then we can be ready for um, P2 or P3. Uh, so like these guys would spawn up right here and be like, oh, sweet. So you guys are blocking the spawns. That means these guys spawned out. I'm going to sit in a corner and hold this lane while you soak up time. And now we're back into that setup, but now in the opposite direction. And uh, it's a little bit more different where now this guy is holding middle, holding the pinch. This guy is still holding middle or the right lane. And this guy can actually just sit in this corner off spawn and play for cut while this guy soaks up time. And that's how we broke the hard point through a spread break. Let's talk about a, you know, 45 second. Like, let's say the spread break didn't go down, right? Or maybe we're spawning up at 45 seconds and we still have like a teammate alive over here. Then it would be like, okay, because we have our teammate alive over here and he's being a nuisance with this anchor and this guy should be playing for him off of spawn we can kind of just like full on hit p2 and just like play for the trades immediately and play for a uh you know 3v2 3v1 and then maybe uh one of us like spawn up at 30 seconds so like let's say like two of us like pushed up and we won these trades so these two guys die and they're still spawning in the back for whatever reason but now we have hard point control and it's like we have two players in hard point control and then our player spawns up right, right over here and there's 30 seconds left, now this player might say, all right, I can just you know push forward and help my teammates. I can go outer and try to play for these guys, or I could just go for a crazy route that no one would really expect, and because my teammates are already focused on time, 
all of these enemies should be looking at my teammates and because they're all looking at my teammates I can hit this outer route and play for this pinch and shoot them all from behind and then by the time I do that there would probably be like maybe five seconds left of P2 and then once again because of that pinch all these enemies are now spawning all the way back at old and now we are fully rotated for P3 and we're in, in the setup for P2. Now obviously what may happen is let's say we did kill four enemies and P3 just popped. If P3 just pops, um, then that means these enemies would actually be spawning in P3 spawns and we would be spawning in good P3 spawns, which we could spawn back here for good P3 spawns, but usually you're spawning like over here at side fuel. Um, and like this is just the those parts where like picking up on timings, you might mess up a little bit, but the more you look at your minimap and the more you look at your kill feed and like you look at the timer, you would know that, oh, um, these two players right here died and spawned up with like one second left of P2, but these two players right here, they died and spawned up when P3 popped. And what that means is these two players spawned up over here, uh, the bottom two right here spawned when uh, P2 was still alive, but then these top two players spawned up when P3 popped. And then that's where you would have spawns like this, and it would be a split spawn. And now hopefully, gears are running for us and it's p3 and there's 60 seconds left of p3 and worse you know separated like this we can now go for a spread hit right where now we can have a player go top and try to challenge them from the left we can have this player go top ac and like challenge them from top snow this player can go top server and then this player can like hit an outer route and now we're collapsing from all four sides on our first break. But basically what I'm trying to say is every single time you're spawning up and you're looking at the timer, 60 seconds, 45 seconds, 30 seconds, it's always telling you where you can go, what you can do, especially on offense. And on offense, your first break should be a spread break, take your time, attack from all angles. Your second break should just basically be a, you know, hit head on and just push them. And then your third and final break uh, is normally your rotation, which is just get to new. And all while this is happening, defense, defense, they are literally just sitting there and going, okay, we know where they're spawning and we know where they're coming. Oh, we didn't see two of them on the right lane. The other two must be hitting the left lane. Those guys that like we just killed spawn in and immediately like reinforce the, their defensive position. Is it fair to say like once we have those people down, we should move fast or should we still take our time? That's good. That's a good question. So when you're playing like eights or if you're playing ranked play, I would say the second that you already get two dead. So like, let's say that, you know, it's you and your teammate and we kill these two guys in Hill and we know that there's a player like top third and a player in the back. I would sit there and say in ranked play, you absolutely should try and like, like push it and make a play and try and flip those spawns. Um, just because like, Chances are P3 will pop and you guys will just spawn like right here, considering that you guys have P2. So like it's not a big deal if you fly out and oh, you died because now you should just spawn up right here. Um, but when you're playing with a team, it would be up to the team. And what do we want to do? Uh, because when you're playing with a team, it may be called out. No, 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 no. Let's play for another wave of kills. Uh, because technically these guys are in the advantage the entire time because not only do they predict where you guys are going to be, but now when they spawn up, they have a close spawn so they can get to hard point right away. And it's cause they deserve that. They have good spawns. Like they deserve it. Right. Uh, so that's where like you and your team would sit there and be like, all right, let's get another wave of kills. Let's let them spawn up. We know they're spawning up, but now let's play it like team deathmatch, get another wave of kills. And ideally your teammates would be like in a tighter setup and like just waiting. And then eventually these guys would be like, all right, they're not pushing us. Uh, are we going to hold for P3 and give up X amount of time? 
Or are we going to try and push this? And when we push this, if we die, we would just still spawn up in the back. But like that's that's the coin toss now. And that's where it's like we're making them have to make a decision. That makes sense. Right? Yeah. And like um, I would I personally would say you could just, you know, yeah. soak up the time and force these guys to push you. Um, and eventually they will just overextend. They push you, you get the kills, and then you can get another two dead, and then we can fly out. Um, would you also say, like, depends yeah. on the point? Like, like yeah. In this, this situation, it's like you have a back spawn, right? So these guys are going to spawn right in. But, like, in something like, I forget what it's called, like a rotational spawn where, like, both teams are spawning out, it's maybe better to, like, rush in because you know those other guys are going to spawn out. Kind of like P5 then maybe for invasion then, right? Like the way the game is designed is there are good spawns and the team who gets those good spawns are in some type of advantage, which means they should be able to like get a second chance at trying to break the hard point. Um, and I don't know if you could visualize that, but basically getting inside of this castle and like getting past this wall right here, it's very easy for blue team to do. Uh, not only because of the spawn, but because you have a crap ton of cover. Like, you have a tank, you have a bunch of trees, you have a bunch of cars. And over here, you don't have yeah. anything at all. <laughs> but not only do we have, like, our top lane, middle lane, and bottom lane, but we also have a 25-yard line and our 25-yard line. So, like, in a way, it could be... Uh, like, let's say we're breaking... Like, let's say we we're breaking P4. Um, we might be at the 50-yard line right now, right? And they're inside the hard point. What we may have to do is we may have to get, you know, two to three kills. And then we can push up to, like, the 25-yard line. And then we'll have to get, like, another two to three kills. And then we can finally get inside of the hard point. And then, like, this guy would probably already back off and, like, rotate early. And now I'm wishing I didn't use P5 as an example because you got to rotate at, like, 45 seconds. <laughs> yeah, I was going to, yeah. I was like, dang it. <laughs> but, like, in this example, if you just imagine there's a guy anchoring the spawns at P5, then, like, yeah, I would I would 100% understand, right. like, just get all the kills because these guys are spawning super close in. Yeah, and, like, again, um, and this one is a little bit more balanced. So, like, again, it... That's, this is the beauty about Call of Duty is it's all up in the air. The Some wrong things are also the right things and vice versa, yeah. right? Uh, where technically red team over here, they have good spawns. Uh, the reason why they have good spawns is because obviously they're spawning way closer to P4. Um, not only are they spawning closer to P4, but they have this wall and these pillars that they can just run up on and then they can get behind um, and like already start cutting and like playing for P4. Like there's a lot of good going on for P4. But blue team over here, P5 is a money hill and they're like guaranteed it. Um, and it's freaking insane because blue team, normally you're spawning over here. But the second, the second that one of these enemies push past this 50 yard line right here, you guys start spawning right here. And that tells you, oh, there's a guy rotating. Sweet. And then you guys can literally just double, like, just zoom towards the back and then play the 2v1. It's different for every team. Technically, this team has good spawns for P4, but a lot of people would say, nah, blue team has good spawns for P4 because they can sit on this tank, shoot down to them. They have a wall that they could kind of play. Um, it is much harder getting to P4 on this side as a sub, uh, but you can also... You can also have a player challenge their movies as well. And like the more that we're talking about it, the more it's actually blue team is in the advantage. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. I always think like P4 is a weird hill because like in the back of everyone's mind, people are like, oh, I need to go to P5. I need we need to make sure we get the spawns for P5. So right. it feels like on P4, maybe a person or two are missing from each team because they're trying to make sure that they get the spawns for P5. Exactly, exactly. And this is where... Like, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, I was going to say, yeah, P4 is weird for that reason. 
it is weird. It absolutely is weird. And a lot of the times it does pay off as well, where like the enemy team kind of just says, all right, we're not going to play P4 at all. And we're just going to rotate towards P5. And because they do that, they may flip spawns. And now blue team is in a terrible spot, right? But if we follow the breaking fundamentals and it's 60 seconds of P4, we could sit there and understand that we can have one sub player basically work this up and try to just try to get to the back right here. We can have an AR player go top and basically look for damage. Um, and then we can have one sub player hit movies to try and go for a pinch. And then we can have another AR player basically work up middle and then ideally go for another pinch, uh, either from the full pinch right there or pinch through dark. And like, once again, the whole point of this is these four players, they're just being a nuisance, just, you know, taking damage down from two, four, and three. And then number one can get really good timing on number four. Number four is dead. Oh, come on. Number four is dead, but then number one flies out and then he dies to number two. But number three challenges from middle and then kills number two. And then um, at this point, uh, maybe number three kills number three. And then number one and four, like these two guys, you know, play the trades or whatever. And now what happens is we end up having the hard point control. Or maybe we don't have hard point control, but these guys are all spawning out over here. And now at least when we all spawn up, we can now sit there and go, sweet. We all spawned up. We can all now triple hit the front or quadruple hit the front and, you know, two V four these guys front. And now ideally what would happen is these guys would all die. And now they would sit there and be like, damn, do we really want to lose 45 seconds, 30 seconds left of P4? And now this is where red team actually has a good chance to actually take these next 30 seconds to go for a spread break for P5. And once again, as a team, all four of us know what all four of us are doing. We know that we're all four going for a spread break, and then we're hitting the teams head on, and then we're going for the rotation. Um... And the reason why I put down this 30 second mark is because this 30 second mark is usually the magic number when people rotate. Now, obviously, for defense, the way you would prevent all of this from happening on defense is quite literally, you would just make sure that you're filling in the lanes and you're keeping track of this kill feed. And just making sure you know where all four of these enemies are at all times. Because going back to that scenario where if we have a player in time, a player sitting in top loft, a player on tank, and then let's just say this player is like middle tank. Um, if we know that we see two and four, like we would give a call out, be like, yo, one guy sitting pillars, one guy sitting top blue. We know where two players are. Where the hell are the other two? And that's where this guy should start thinking, well, I guess these other two players may start rotating. Um, and ideally, this guy is watching the middle cross. So you would actually see if they rotate and then you can like just play for that kill. But if not, ideally, you would be like, OK, I know that they're going to hit me. And then you would like win this gunfight. And then like when you win this gunfight and you get traded out, this guy would be like, oh, shoot, you got traded out. No problem. He'll probably push this out and then play for this 1v1 against this guy on tank, kill him. And now these guys are spawning up back here. And then this, this guy's spawning up and all he's doing is he's going back to the tank and bumping each other. And that's what this is called. It's, it's called bumping. Where now it's at the 42nd mark and because this guy is running late and because this guy is stuck middle, this is where 45 seconds, these guys are now going, yo, only two on hill. Push, 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 push. We're all pushing this. And ideally, once again, you know, number four would kill number one. Number two would kill number four. And the number one would kill number two and the number one would sit in here. Number two would be like, OK, I don't need to push up to tank. I'll get right here. And then number four would spawn up and then, you know, get to this middle tank. Um, number three would also either sit here and hold all of middle or he could push up inside of movies and try and, you know, cut those players off. But once all that goes down, now it's, oh, shoot, it's 30 seconds. It's time to rotate. And that's where these players know that they're in the advantage. This guy is just going to go new, and then this guy is just going to play for the cut, and then these two guys are going to work with each other at the last 30 seconds. 
and like these this guy's rotating this guy's rotating and then ideally like all three of these players would rotate or maybe it's like a two two right or maybe all four of them decide to rotate now that's where it's dependent on the team but like i said normally when you're playing ranked play usually you would have two people rotating at that 30 seconds and then the other two people would hit old um and this is kind of a bad example because we are talking about p5 uh, where typically you might see these rotations at like 45 seconds. Uh, but I'm hoping me showcasing the defense and offense and how the timings and how the spawns and everything works, we can see how it's it's really just a simple game. When you're on defense, you have good spawns and you have objective. Know where these enemies are spawning. Know where they're going. They can only hit left lane, middle lane, or right lane. Make sure you fill in those lanes, right? This entire time, this player at middle tank was holding all of middle lane and holding all of right lane the entire time. Um, really simple. And then when you're on offense, you just got to go for a break. Typically, first break, spread break, second break, just hit it out, bang it out, and then, then your third break normally is rotating. And that's the most simplest way I can explain it. <laughs> uh, just literally play trades. Like literally, if all four of us just run at the hill, and all three of these guys are running in the hill, and this fourth player says, oh, I'm the last one, this fourth player would literally just like watch the flank and just like, wait a second. All of this chaos would go down, die, 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 die. And eventually what would happen is we would know that the last player watching pinch, watching pinch would go, oh, we're the last players alive. Let's 1v1 on time. And then whoever wins that 1v1 wins time. And then we now do it all over again. These guys spawn up. We run at time. These guys spawn up. They probably run at time. Or it would just be 30 seconds, rotate, and then we would just do it all over again. All right. It's 30 seconds, so they're going to have two players in P1. So let's have two players in P1. The other two players are going to be rotating. So let's have the other two players rotating. Play the trades. Play the trades, play the trades. Um, it's the most simplest way I can explain it. Uh, which again, when you when you guys are rotating, obviously the trades would go down in either way. This guy wins. Who hoorah, hooray! It's P two now. Maybe these guys, maybe blue team wins the trades, and now it's okay. But let's all three go towards P two. Last player who spawns up picks up pinch. These players are all pushing up. Obviously, the last player is over here, so technically this guy is, is playing the pinch. And the, these guys have a 1v1, and once again, it just comes down to the trades. Literally, as simple as hard point can be, just everyone play the hard point. Last person picks up pinch. Play trades. Wasn't P2 <laughs> that, that you shouldn't go, go, that one should anchor P5 when, they're, when, is it, when you're playing P2 for the spawns? Wasn't it like a magic spawn line by the sandbags in front of P5? Oh, yeah, yeah. So uh, basically for P2, if you have a player sitting behind this wall on this head glitch right here, you're basically anchoring and your teammates should almost always spawn behind you. And red team will be spawning laundry, um, like bottom blue over here. Uh, sometimes they'll spawn over here. Just they'll get a close spawn for whatever reason. Um and it'll, it'll always be like this. But for whatever reason, I don't know why, if you have all four players past this wall, and I don't know why it is, but literally, if you have all four players past this wall and we start getting kills, for whatever reason, the enemies will start spawning behind us. <laughs> Just because we don't have a player behind this wall. I, I don't know why that happens. I have no clue why. Um, blame it on Activision. Yeah, literally. You got to blame it on Activision. Exactly. 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 Um, yeah, but again, this is kind of funny because now we can talk about what do we call good side, what do we call bad side. Some people consider blue team to have good side, but other people say that they have bad side. And I would argue that, yes, they have bad side because number four has a bunch of easy cover to get to time. Number three has the best head glitch in the game. And then uh, these players spawning up, they can always go middle and then just spawn trap the enemies trying to rotate. Uh, not only that, but my favorite thing to do on P2 is I love pushing up middle, hugging this wall, 
then I sit right here on this wall and they just keep spawning up and I keep spawn trapping them over and over and over again. And then it would be like 30 seconds, time to rotate. I'll probably die, but guess what? When I spawn up, I always win this rotation before they do. Yeah, and like this one, this one is where like, obviously I kind of said, oh, when you're on defense, you know, you can have, you know, just fill in the lanes like this. But when you're first starting out on P1, you kind of don't want to have players fill in the uh, lanes like this because that makes them completely useless. Uh, it would be way better off having literally all three players fight P1 and then one player can hold pinch all the way back over here. Uh, and once again, last player always holds pinch. Last play player to spawn up holds pinch. And no matter what, even if there was an enemy that crossed all the way back here and they're trying to rotate for P2, Terminal is so bad, your teammates will just spawn right next to you. Even oh, though this shit. guy is sitting inside of here. Yeah, yeah. So, this is where, obviously, Terminal maps are different. Four people do, to flip spawn. Uh, <laughs> you need to have a body back here to flip spawns. Pretty oh, much. Yeah. Because, um, like I said, I've, I've done it where, like, I've literally got back here. I've killed one guy. And when I killed that one guy back here, he literally spawned up right next to me and then just like jumped up and killed me. I was just like, mother. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, th there, uh, the spawns are a lot more. Uh, there's a lot more spawns outside on the bad side. So sometimes you might very well get lucky and like the game will just say, oh, because this team has hard point control. And because this guy pushed up the left side, we're going to spawn his teammates next to him because it's squad spawns. And because this guy is actually blocking these spawns and this guy has hard point, we're going to spawn these guys in primary bad spawns since this guy is blocking primary good spawns. And like you might get in a weird scenario like this. Uh, but most of the time, if your teammates are just kind of like fighting head on like this, Almost always, these enemies will just spawn right next to you. <laughs> so I wasn't sure if I was like doing something weird. Like you sit, can you like sit in the plane? Like if you have your teammates anchoring, let's say the security spawn, are they just going to keep spawning eskies? Yes, yeah. So uh, obviously, when the if it's like first sixty seconds of P one, we really wouldn't want to try to go for that spawn trap. We really wouldn't. We would want to play tight. And, you know, just play for the times, play for the trades. Uh, but let's say it was 30 seconds and we're rotating and like you're already sitting inside of P2. You have a teammate already like helping you at P2. We have a player anchoring, watching middle. Then we have a player soaking up old time. If for whatever reason we somehow get like three dead, four dead, that's where it's like, yo, guys, I think we should go for the spawn trap. And then number three would basically get inside of plane Number four would soak up P2 time. Number one would hold left lane. And then number two is anchoring. And ideally, that is what would happen is now P2 just pops and we can get them into a spawn trap. Uh, the one time yeah. I think I was able to do it is I was rotating to P3. Uh, and then these guys were just spawning eskies and I just kind of looked and saw them. <laughs> Yeah, no, dude, that's perfect. That is perfect, and it is possible. So what that, it, what we're basically doing um, is kind of what I talked about for spawns, but it's uh, the quadrant rule, where ideally, as long as you're sitting in a quadrant, the enemies shouldn't spawn in that quadrant. And as you can already see, we are blocking all these quadrants, and there's only one quadrant they can spawn. Okay, if, is there... there if this number one guy, let's say, is somewhere by Dreams, by P2, or somewhere around there, uh, are, are they still going to spawn Eskies, right? Or no? Yes, they will. Okay, okay. Yeah, so number one would spawn either more like back here, back here. He uh, could spawn Burger, uh, but oh, welcome back, Penny. <laughs> uh, but yeah, he would spawn back here, and like he could, and once again, he would still hold the left lane just all the way back over here now. But you can start a defense in a wide setup or a tight setup. So in that scenario where it was, oh shoot, it's P P2 is about to pop, but somehow we just got four dead. 
we can get into a wide setup and this is a wide setup. We're all sp spread wide, right? And then obviously the more that we die, the more uh, map control that these enemies get and how, and like they're going to need to get another wave of kills. And then once they get like two to three waves of kills, then they flip spawns and then they break P2. There's other times mm -hmm. where you guys just rotate early and we just need to play tight and you kind of start out like this. So we would start out like this. Um, and then if we get kills, then we would push out and do that thing we talked about. Yeah, thank you guys so much. Uh, please, if you guys do have any questions, personal questions, anything, always feel free to DM me and I will always be happy to help. Awesome, bro. Cheater, man. All right, thank you guys. Have a good weekend. You too, you too. All right, peace.